you see according to scripture the dynamics of the operation of darkness is that it is territorial in nature and they preserve their doings around territories by the ministry of spirits that we call familiar spirits that these spirits are the spirits that grow with the inhabitants of territories when you read the bible when jesus christ was casting out the demons from the madman in gadara they pleaded that he does not relocate them to another territory because they had been in that territory for a long time they agree with the people they have mastered the culture and the activities of people they are responsible for creating mind control patterns so you find out that there is a region where it is the women that feed the men have you seen that kind of thing some of you is happening in your own families no matter how hard working the person is he will spend 10 years in the u.s and return back there are families where the elder ones serve the younger ones there are families where all the men do not live long they have a lifespan these are patterns i'm showing you not to scare you we are believers and there is victory in christ but i'm just opening you up to this reality there are spirits that clamp down poverty you would see professors within a territory there are territories where the oldest person living does not cross 50. the territory is full of young people who cannot mentor younger ones because there is a spirit that cuts the heritage of good things there are families that are made of old people every time the old man wants to die he comes back alive and a young man dies for it you read your bible you will see that kings slew their children to maintain their own life Are we together yes. there are families where marriages never work the moment the woman gets married the lifespan of peace is two years she must return back to her father's house so you see fathers even in their old age taking care of the entire children there are families where if you rise it's like a spiritual meter watching you if you hit a threshold of achievement you must go down no matter what happens this as i'm saying it many of you are looking at your lives you are seeing it that you go to bed and you are finding yourself in an old house an old secondary school you are writing an exam that never finishes don't say it does not matter i'm giving you meaning to your experiences the moment they say you are writing a promotion exam there you go to bed in the night someone comes either to sleep with you or do something or, and then the next person who vowed to help you looks at you and it's as if a spell is cast on them there are ladies if a man says he loves you it's a spirit that will appear and warn him and say you if you don't leave this lady he won't tell you what he saw he will just back up quietly and peacefully now listen now this is where the prophetic ministry has made a bit of a mistake because you see if i'm a man of god for instance and i'm a prophet and i'm about to help a man and a woman if god opens my eyes and i see i may not know that there is an altar in this woman's life that is responsible for the backwardness of the man so i will just interpret based on what i've seen and i'll say this woman is a witch she may not be a witch but the truth is she's connected to something a, a foundation that is having an obvious implication on her husband ah your life will change today oh. there are families that have raised presidents in this nation have raised politicians in this nation and yet they may not have a house of their own have you seen people like that they will tell you by god's grace i raised this one i advised this senator i helped him in fact it was me that told him to run for senate there are people the evil covering on you makes sure that every good person forgets you you labor over people for a long time when it's time to help you and some of us are men of god sincerely so you fast and pray with people with all your heart hallelujah i know families where men do not leave the wife of the sons of the prophet all the men in her life were about to leave the widow at nain her husband died her only child died and jesus said no this is a pattern this is not just the issue of resurrection 
Hallelujah. You get a job and you rejoice. Everybody celebrate with me. You are dancing. The Lord has done me well. And from that day that you announce it, you go down immediately. This is why many of our parents today and grandparents don't love God again. When you ask them, they'll say, look, we are the ones who brought Renard Bonke to Nigeria. We brought T.L. Osborne. Those days we loved God. God has failed me. We gave our all and God failed us. Leave me to go back to my traditional worship. Let me tell you what Satan is looking for. Satan is not looking for your money. He does not need it. Satan is not looking for your marriage. What Satan wants is transgenerational allegiance. Transgenerational allegiance. Bow down to me. Let your children bow down to me. But there's someone in this place. You won't bow in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. Satan is not interested in membership. No. Satan is not interested in health. No. Have you seen people that is the same pattern of sickness that kills everybody? Twenty years. And all of a sudden, a particular pattern of sickness. The younger one, 20 years. Have you seen your loved ones sharing the dream that you two you had when you were their age? They will say, Mama, I don't know why, but someone came to me in the night. An old woman. And your mother starts looking at you in a strange way. Say, how did she dress? And she describes it. And say, oh, next week is your birthday. Have you seen people that have two two year or three three year cycles something tragedy tragic must happen whether death or loss every two two years these are patterns that are caused by familiar spirit but in the name of jesus the son of the living god today those patterns die completely in your life listen i come from a family where the men never rise sustainably so i know what i'm saying i'm not preaching nonsense he says the things that we have seen the things that we have heard even that which our hands have handled of the word of life i know people who have spent decades in the u.s decades in uk and when it is time these spirits call them back they return back like thieves and they come and sit back in the village and die Deliver us from evil. Hallelujah. There are territories where no matter how nice the man is and the wife to the children, the children must become rebellious. Must become rebellious. They will pray for them they will love them the moment those children become teenagers here these altars are activated and the child begins to be a, a rebel and the man will cry as a man of god and cry and say why is my life like this i do not teach these things to magnify satan in any way i only teach these things to open you to realities we have trained ourselves in the body of christ to tell lies and people just hide these things and pretend that they are not there whereas you know it is eating you up there are some of you you cannot you know i many of you have listened to my messages demons used to oppress me oh, as a man of god not as a believer that i would preach and yet and because of the prophetic inclination i will see them enter my room But upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness and the sons of Jacob listen some of you here sincerely you are looking at me some of you are business people some of you are great people you are not lazy you've been laboring for decades but there are spirits that sit upon the wealth of families Zechariah 1 18 what seest thou and he said i saw four horns that these are the horns that have lifted up themselves against jerusalem against judah so that no man doth lift up his head no matter how hard you walk it is from hand to mouth
you buy a new car and as soon as you go out to show it to your pastor on the way your car will hit Mopol you think it was just an accident have you seen people who build houses just when they are about to celebrate by the next day the whole house will crash they say one wind just came and pushed the house or those who build a house to celebrate it the next day they will die there are families that never eat the fruit of their labor just when good things are about to happen something must happen someone shout god forbid hallelujah why am i telling you this because i'm about to show you the forces of deliverance there are some of you the call of god upon your life if these altars are displaced you will be surprised it's the reason why nobody hears your voice the day you are about to do something all your destiny helpers are absent everybody who can lift you always comes late can anything good come out of nazareth nathaniel was attesting to the fact that territories can carry spirits and altars and controlling powers that keep them keep people down jesus never looked and said nathaniel you are lying he said no leave him he's sincere he's an israelite indeed in whom there is no girl in other words he's not lying hallelujah there are families that you move forward but your pace is too slow the first person builds a house at 70 years the earliest person to finish school finishes at 45 and if anybody attempts to demonstrate speed in that family this altars cut them off immediately please sit down three levels of deliverance so that we can start praying mm. number one the first level of deliverance from scripture casting out the spirit influences in your life and at the back of your challenges that is the first level of deliverance casting out the spirit influences in your life and behind your challenges spirits do not just oppress people spirits can live in circumstances that means your problem can have a spirit behind it that's what i mean spirits don't just oppress lives alone they can enter situations and empower them a spirit can enter a court case issue and something that should be a simple issue can last for decades till it makes you poor that one you know it's not an ordinary court case again a spirit can fraternize with headache something that you can just take panadol and let it go and that thing will remain for 14 years hospital will not diagnose it every time you see things that the physical laws cannot solve there is a spirit that is making it alive james chapter 2 and verse 26 apostle james was teaching us on faith and works and he borrowed a phenomenon of the spirit and the body to explain it to us he says for as the body without a spirit is dead so faith without works is dead so everybody needs a spirit to be alive by body i don't just mean human body problems are bodies there is a spirit that empowers them are we together Casting out the spirit influences in your life and at the back of your challenges. Spirits can attach themselves to your spirit, soul, and body through covenants, ignorance, and disobedience. We have seen it. So, casting out these spirits is biblical. It's not demonic. It's not satanic to cast out devils. The Bible gives it as a mandate to believers. When Jesus announced his messianic prophecy he took out time to cast out demons to heal and to do all of these things when he commissioned the apostles he said heal the sick cast out demons cleanse the lepers raise the dead freely you have received freely give when given the great commission he said this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out demons 
so there are spirits behind the situations of people you don't solve those problems by counseling are we together now yes it was paul that began to express his frustration even as an apostle in romans chapter 7 he said that i see a war in my members he said so that the things that i do not want to do i find myself doing them and the things that i want to do i do not find myself doing them he says for with my spirit i serve the lord but in my body that is my flesh i see another war walking within my members he was so frustrated he said oh wretched man that i am who shall deliver me from this body of death then chapter 8 verse 1 says there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in christ jesus who walk after not after the flesh but after the spirit it says for the law of the spirit of life had set me free from the law of sin and death so there are interplay of laws empowered by altars there are people who steal just because they are lazy and foolish but there are people who steal because there are spirits behind it if you like hide your money inside your shoe it's like word of knowledge those demons would push them they would just look and open the it's not normal have you seen people like that break the wall and keep your money they will pass and stand in front of that wall and look at it they don't know what is driving them it's a spirit you don't solve it out by flogging and by counseling hallelujah so casting out the spirit influences now this is a part of deliverance that is prevalent in the apostolic and the prophetic ministry we believe in casting out of demons and once it is done within the allowance of scripture that is fine but this is not the only dimension please listen to me this is the reason why many people's deliverance is not complete they continue to do it again and again and again and again because casting out demons is not the only requirement for complete deliverance number two the second level of deliverance is called deliverance through transformation deliverance through transformation and that by the word of god deliverance through transformation romans chapter 12 please when you read from verse 1 it says i beseech you brethren by the mercies of god he said that he offer your bodies a living sacrifice unto god holy and acceptable and he calls it your reasonable act of worship then when we get to verse 2 he says be not conformed to this world the word world is the greek word aeon the thinking pattern that comes with this cosmos it says but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind that you may prove what is that good acceptable and perfect will of god so the bible says to be transformed philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 it says to permit this mind to be in you which was also in christ jesus there was a belief construction that was in christ jesus that made him to manifest as the son of god he said let that mind also be in you this is where i will respectfully observe that the apostolic and the prophetic ministry largely are not getting it quite well we do well in casting out demons but the ministry of the word the preaching of deliverance through the transforming power of the word is not there when you cast out these demons watch this the spirits go away but that door is still open deliverance through transformation is like closing the door through knowledge are we together the bible says through knowledge shall the just be delivered when you do not understand the principles of the kingdom it will make even your deliverance look like it is not profitable and can i tell you this over the years demon spirits have studied the church and have studied men of god they have known that many of us have not understood this dimension of deliverance so when you cast those demons they go out happy because they, they will be waiting for the person at, at the junction there they know that that door is still open so before you say anything they go happily they know that next week the man is back with them deliverance through transformation what does this mean a reorientation of your spiritual understanding through the word opening you up to the nature and the character of god 
you close the door of the flesh through ignorance you tear down strongholds thought patterns that is a dimension of deliverance that's why it's important that the saints be taught the word of god when these spirits are casted out of you you should not just be left like that you are now mentored and taught the word of god do you know how jesus trained the disciples he spent three and a half years teaching them doing something to their minds afterwards he said you are ready in fact he did not even finish his curriculum with them when he resurrected he had no time to celebrate his victory he said guys get back to class we have 50 more days 40 days i'm with you and then i ascend to heaven and he was teaching them on the matters of the kingdom the teaching ministry is the secret to sustainable deliverance write it down the teaching ministry is the secret to sustainable deliverance more than casting out the spirit influences we must expose the body of christ to the mysteries of the kingdom to the patterns of the kingdom their mindsets must be transformed because mindsets are doorways they are gateways that authorize both the holy spirit and demon spirits into the life of a believer hallelujah deliverance true transformation let me give you an example please can i have two gentlemen here just two well-dressed gentlemen come up here please god bless you let's celebrate them as they come now watch this let's assume these are two gentlemen here are we together god forbid but let's assume that there is a spirit and a pattern in the life of this man and his family are we together now and he comes toward a life and reverend godwin while ministering under the unction of the spirit will cast out the spirit from this man now we agree from the authority of god's word that this man the spirit has left are we together now maybe he comes and his issue is there are no jobs i'm not getting a job i'm not nobody wants to help me every destiny helper just goes away from me okay now the spirit influence is casted out of him but it still does not guarantee he will get a job it still does not guarantee that he will have good people because there are laws in the kingdom that control some of these results for instance the law of honor i've taught you the law of honor many times you've listened to these messages and you've heard me mentor the body of christ on the law of honor are we together now yes so this man this is the guy that god has destined to bless him watch this this is the man who is going to give him a job or a contract or a lifting this man has been delivered of that spirit but he's bankrupt of spiritual knowledge he will pass this man pass him every day and yet his breakthrough will not come because although the spirit is not there he has not been transformed to know that there is honor he won't greet he is rude he is arrogant there is no demon but he will still not rise because he has not been cultured on the systems and the methods of the kingdom now i teach this man on diligence and the power of character are you seeing now this is another level of deliverance the next time he meets his destiny helper what happens good afternoon sir just this act and the man says ah young man i've been seeing you every day you look very smart um what is wrong and he says i've been trusting god for a job he said you mean it and you know is jo i'm just about to give somebody a job somewhere a miracle just happened now it is not the spirit it is now the knowledge the teaching of the word that has brought character in this young man there are many many young nigerians in need demons have been casted out of them but because the methodologies of the kingdom have not been taught them they are still not delivered it's called deliverance truth transformation so when you cast out the spirit influence is just one of the steps now what largely the apostolic and the prophetic ministry does is that they will cast out demons from this man and after he's free after two months he comes back and says man of god i i don't feel that thing i used to feel again but my life has still not changed are you seeing that now there is a plethora of bad behavior ignorance in the life of this man the teaching ministry is the key to sustaining deliverance are we together yes so you see these guys now and this man comes for instance he wants to increase 
now the demon of poverty that sits on his family has been casted out but he still remains poor and then he comes to sit on during a financial series here and here's your pastor teaching that there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty that the diligent hand shall be made fat out together that the lazy man because of the weather will not sow and he will beg in harvest now the teaching is is recalibrating his mind there is a construction of spiritual understanding according to colossians chapter 1 verse 9 please give it to us colossians 1 verse 9 paul was mentoring the church in Colossae, and he was showing them the boundaries of spiritual growth that i know i will not seek to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with number one the knowledge of his will number two all wisdom number three spiritual understanding are we together yes. so this man is taught he came from a family of idol worship came from a family of negative demonic priesthood and sits under this unction and fire lands from heaven gets that spirit out but the man is still not free and then after one year of proper mentorship the teaching ministry exposing him to the dimensions of the kingdom now the man is strong he knows what prayer does he knows what diligence does he knows what honor does he knows what character does are we together now he knows what speaking the word does this man is fortified in a way that those demons will not come again could this be where some of us are now no matter who lays hands on you and no matter what demons are casted out when the madman in gathering was delivered of those spirits the bible says they came and they met him sitting down in the lecture hall of jesus in his right mind his life the demons had left his life the next assignment was his mind your mind needs to change if your mind does not change your life cannot change it's true many believers do not immerse themselves in the kind and the quality of spiritual knowledge that fortifies them and so it is that ignorance that makes satan to look so powerful that he can veto whatever it is and bless you know, and, and oppress you no sir satan does not have that kind of power even jesus knocks at the door of your heart and patiently waits for you to open if the son of god knocks your heart why shouldn't spirits knock i tell you they are not but they have taught you a way of opening it without knowing there is no spirit authorized to veto through the will of men it is not given to them at the expense of your eternal salvation the savior knocks and waits for you to use your will to open listen what you know about god and what you know about satan matters let me tell you a secret do you know if this man has a dream now watch this if this man has a dream and in that dream he sees someone shooting him or an arrow fired into his body are you together or something demonic he can get up and say ah so this is how my life is he does not know that that very act is an act of permission in the spirit are you getting what i'm saying see satan is a master of the flesh realm and according to the law of birthing and the law of reproduction it will take the seed from the man meeting with the woman to have a child are we together watch this the dreams that satan projects to you they are like seeds from a man they need a fertilization the same way a man can plant a seed and a woman's womb can reject the seed you can also reject those projections please listen there is nothing in the realm of the spirit that is absolute it depends on men for it to happen no matter how real you see that dream no matter how real you see satan knows that you may not have that knowledge so you get up saying this thing was real i'm even sweating it's over that is over it's like the woman receiving seed hmm. yes sir. so when you get up and have those dreams and then you are fortified by this understanding barrenness is a reality in our lives 
you can make your relationship with satan look like barrenness that no matter how many seeds the bible says that there are three things that never say enough one of it is the barren womb so no matter how many times satan sends those seeds through dreams through visions through circumstances around you you are motivated by the reality of scripture that while we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen for the things that are seen the bible says they are temporal but the things that are unseen not unreal unseen are eternal now you can you know what to do with the dream you had this morning ah, i had a vision about you and i saw a ghastly motor accident i don't doubt your vision but that is a seed looking for fertilization you can receive it through fear you can receive it through doubt or you can stand based on the word of god which is another seed incorruptible and superimpose these lies the bible says let god be true see a lie is not what is wrong or false a lie is whatever god did not say understand this a lie is not an incorrect information a lie is whatever did not proceed from the lips of the master so even if it is correct and god did not say it it is a lie mm. so when you look at your situation now and god did not say it what do you call it so adjust your idea yes. our world interprets lies as what is wrong relative to a standard of the truth jesus said i am the way i am the truth the truth i am life deliverance through transformation let me give us the last one and then we allow the fire of the spirit to fall upon our destinies in this place hmm. the third level of deliverance that makes it complete is called the discipline of conformity romans chapter 8 from verse 13 the discipline of conformity there is a dimension of deliverance that does not depend on god alone no man has an active participatory role to play the discipline of conformity romans chapter 8 please and verse 13 are you there romans 8 13 please read one to read for if we live after the flesh ye shall die but if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body who does the mortifying god only supplies the grace but the active is called the discipline of conformity there are many believers that leave everything up to god and just believe that things will happen just by itself no there is the discipline of conformity look up please ask any man who prays they will be lying to tell you prayer is convenient every time there are times you have to wake yourself in tongues and say in the name of jesus leg obey me god gave me authority over you you are going to stand up and pray there is no man who studies the bible and just keeps smiling all the time it takes discipline to do certain things in this kingdom the discipline of conformity no matter how anointed you are if it's not an oppression over your life and you stand on this road you will die now that means you can choose to leave the earth in the next five minutes and god will respect your will you stand on this road the devil will program someone who is thinking like you too and two of you will kill yourselves immediately that means it is within your power to walk with the provisions of grace afforded you to ensure that you walk within the boundaries the provisions that are meant for the believers to make for victory it's god helping us if we're together say amen, amen. galatians chapter 6 and verse 8 galatians 6 and verse 8 
for he that soweth now he's talking about farming look up please he that soweth to his flesh so the flesh is a soil and the spirit is a soil he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap everlasting life let me tell you what that means that as a christian where you don't pay attention to your spiritual life that laxity is an invitation that demons come back again to my destiny no matter what kind of covering you are in if you allow this carelessness that you do not do anything about your life oh pray for me as you are going to church i was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the lord pastor just wrote a book a series was just finished buy the truth and sell it not uh -uh. you can buy clothes you can buy designers respectfully speaking i don't mean to be sarcastic and you don't invest you are sowing to the flesh the bible assures you that you will of a truth you will reap corruption it is not all up to a pastor or a man of god to deliver you there is a role that you have you cannot watch all kinds of things on tv or on social media and pollute your mind from morning till night and expect that the fire remains and expect that demons go away do you know that there is an information you listen to for five minutes it will take you almost six months to get it out of your mind are we together yes. now we're a social media generation and i bless god for the privilege of the social media thank god for the the good use of it but in many instances it has destroyed people there are people every two two minutes even when they are driving they are doing something it's terrible you must have the discipline to conquer that addiction if you want to go far in life your phone cannot have authority over you don't let this become a demon don't let a demon enter your phone phone thank you but that you were created to be an advantage to my life i should not be a slave to you you don't know where your bible is for two weeks but if your phone gets missing for five minutes if your recharge card becomes 200 naira it, it looks like you are sick you move around till you borrow money and put in recharge card where the book felt i can't remember i don't know where i kept the cd just when he was about to say something that will liberate me sincerely i pray for my generation that god will give us an appetite for spiritual things genuinely that we would not see god as a necessary luggage we are carrying in our voyage through destiny and you know right now when you talk about being spiritual and being serious it is not trendy it looks like you are you are a nuisance to civilization but the time will come when everyone will reap the harvest of the seed he has sown the bible says let god be true and all men liars i do not know one man who has been a genuine passionate lover of god sincere not that you are using god to get things a lover of god committed to the truth of scripture walking in truth and you remain down no sir no sir are we ready to pray casting out the spirit influences deliverance through transformation the discipline of conformity it is this aspect of discipline that will require some of you sustaining the courage to edit relationships there are many many people who love god sincerely so but there are very destructive associations apostle i don't drink but all my friends drink but they know that i'm, I'm the preacher god kept me there to win them listen let me tell you don't fool yourself that's not how god changes people god takes moses out of egypt first and works on him before sending him back to egypt the training does not happen while you are in egypt are we together yes there are times that because god is insisting on lifting people he can relocate you literally from your family for many years because even though he loves your family members they do not hold a position that can allow the presence of god to build you so he would disguise it either through a job 
as a student he will disguise it by sending you to a university far nyc far a job somewhere that system of quarantine is very important that he takes you out of that environment that sponsors evil around your life and keeps you in a place where you flog it out with destiny and when you are made he sends you back listen to me some of us our parents had the opportunity to hear preachers say what i'm saying and they were sitting on chairs just like you are listening and they laughed at the preacher look at your pain today is a result of their laughter and their carelessness now god is giving you an opportunity in this conference today you can choose to say i may have suffered what my parents did not do anything about but i love my children too much to allow them ask me a question tomorrow that i cannot answer and say daddy where were you i had an old tape and i had you were in that service why did you not say amen when they were praying why did you not open your heart to submit your prayer request it's called the comeback god is about to lift families please rise up on your feet my deliverer is coming my deliverer is standing by thank you guys god bless you my deliverer is coming my deliverer is standing by sing it with all your heart my deliverer is coming my deliverer is standing by my deliverer is coming my deliverer is standing by listen the riches of the kingdom are for those who are part of the kingdom so before we get into this five or ten minutes of destiny changing prayer and ministration you are here listening following online from whatever nation of the world or you are in here and you know sincerely in the name of honesty that you have not given your life to Jesus Christ or you are here and you are saying apostle I love Jesus with all my heart but for some reason my life has just gone haywire and I don't want to deceive myself wherever you are in the next one minute I like you to leave your seat and come and stand here quickly I want to lead you to Jesus win that war of destiny right now think of your children while you make this decision if there's anybody like that quickly please don't wait for the first person be the first win that war and come and stand here let's celebrate them as they come celebrate them as they come what a life is this the best you can do don't sit back there and say one day go better when the titanic sank there were only two lists those who were lost and those who were saved your deliverer is coming your deliverer is standing by please look at me i want to salute all of you young and old alike for making this bold decision when we come to receive the life of god it's not like a funeral service this is this is keep coming god bless you keep coming keep coming listen it is selfish to sit back and not make it right when you know your children will suffer your children's children will suffer it's an opportunity that God is giving. The Bible says when he, the spirit of truth is come, he says that he will convict the world of three things, of righteousness, of sin, and of judgment. Lift your right hand, all of you who are here, high to the heavens. I'd like you to pray after me. You're not reciting a poem. Do this passionately from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus. One more time, say, Lord Jesus. I love you with all my heart and i believe that you are the son of god tonight i receive jesus as my lord my savior and my king i declare that the power of sin of satan and of the flesh 
is broken from off my life from today i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i declare that i reign in life keep your hands lifted father we present to you the ones jesus died for and in the name of jesus we declare that the power of sin the grave the flesh hell is broken over their lives forever we commend you to the ministry of the word and of the spirit and we declare that you become built you become established the power of satan is broken from off your life forever in the name of jesus christ amen and amen okay now this is what you will do please all of you in concert as we clap for you you just get into that room there will be officials that will follow you just for a few minutes and you'll come back and join us as we pray let's celebrate them quickly as they do so god bless you god bless you god bless you please appreciate them Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray? That this will become a moment of destiny. That many of you writing the history of your life can say, I remember it was at Water Life Center. December 2020 that that siege was broken please when it's time to pray I'd like you to pray I know that we've spent a little time but please just walk with me God wants to visit our destinies Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and run some captive Israel. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and run some captive Israel. Rejoice! Rejoice, Emmanuel has come to you, his Israel. Hello, Madonna. Hello, Madonna. Hey. Hello, Madonna. Hello, Madonna. Hello, Madonna. Shela barada ziya dada bada. I see the angels of the Lord in this place. Please take it high. Just give me volume. At the count of three you're going to shout the name jesus listen to me the bible says wherefore kali salanda bariata god had so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above all names he said that at the mention of that name that everything in the earth in heaven and under the earth will bow and declare that jesus is lord as you shout that name every altar every ordinance we are coming with the rod of a higher priesthood please i'd like you to bring them out here there will be a massive deliverance the fire of god will sweep from all over this auditorium right on the internet and bring deliverance to people father i declare by the spirit of grace and prophecy here at water life convention Lord, the destinies that have been tied down, the families that have been tied down, as you shout Jesus at the count of three, let there be deliverance. Are you ready now? At the count of three, one, two, three, shout Jesus. I command altars be broken now. Bring them out. Fire upon altars. 
In the name of Jesus, bring them out. I command yokes of darkness be broken now. Be broken now. Be broken now. Shake it, shake it, shake it, Embrakata kata 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 kata, shabrata skata balikata, ebrete shesi kata. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. Please bring them out. We are praying. I'm seeing, I'm seeing fire coming on ladies because a woman is a gate in the realm of the spirit. I use you as a point of contact. Every daughter of Zion here that has been oppressed by spirits in dreams at the count of three shout Jesus one two three that fire upon your destiny that fire shake it take it take it take it prakato shales kamata embreke te katoso seketa Ancestral altars, yokes of darkness, edge long spirits, lift up your heads, all ye gates, be lifted up, ancient doors. Shadere Barabash, Alla Parata Katoba, the Katoba, the Katoba. Now listen to me. Listen to me. The Lord is opening my eyes, and I'm seeing families that delay has sat upon them. The only thing growing is your age. Nothing else is increasing. At the count of three, fire is falling on those families. Father, I pray that any family here that has been eaten over by the siege of delay, I declare right now in the name of Jesus as you shout again to healer that shout of praise in the name of Jesus may that fire rest upon you one two three shout Jesus I cost delay him I cost delay him I cost delay him the spirits of delay leave these families in the name of Jesus Thou, oh Lord, had a shield for me, my glory, the lifter up of my head. But Thou, oh Lord, had a shield for me, my glory. Hallelujah. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing people's feet bound with chain. I'm seeing the number 11. 11 people in this place. It's like there is a chain holding your destiny. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where they are, but I declare by the Spirit of grace, some of you are up the balcony. Father, these 11 people, right now as I pray, in the name of Jesus and at the count of three may the hand of God reach you one two three be free now be free now chains be broken chains be broken chains be broken chains be broken hallelujah now everyone say this after me Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come by the blood and I declare that on account of the sacrifice of Jesus, every legal access that the devil has over my life, my family, my destiny, my finances, let the blood speak. Lift your hands and pray. Pray, pray, pray. Let the blood speak. 
let the blood speak against ordinances let the blood speak every legal access what a life are you praying online are you praying Hallelujah. Lay your hands on your head. Say in the name of Jesus. My head. You are the symbol of my glory. Everything that has brought you down. Release me now. I rise. And I shine. Lift your voice and pray. Release my glory by the power in the name of Jesus. I rise. I shine. I rise. I shine. I rise. I shine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. Every prison door. And every prison gate stopping my advancement stopping my influence I declare be broken lift your voice and pray every prison door he has broken the gates of bars and cut the bars of iron in thunder Jesus every human agent in partnership with altars in partnership with spirits against my destiny the Lord rebuke you I declare judgment now lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. Are you tired? Say in the name of Jesus. My finances. Hear the word of the Lord. I decree and declare my portion in this land, in this nation within my territory come to me lift your voice and pray my portion god is a god of portions my portion through wisdom come to me through value come to me through relationships come to me through favor come to me through innovation come to me
hallelujah i tell you fire is burning in this place listen to me the bible says and jabez was more honorable than his brethren then the bible tells us the beginning of the story that the mother cursed him because she bore him in sorrow but jabez came to a point where he said oh that thou wouldest bless me and enlarge my coast is someone ready to pray say father this level of my life i am grateful for it but shift me to a higher level shift me in ministry shift me financially shift me spiritually lift your voice and pray higher level higher dimension higher dimension grateful for this level but take me higher grateful for this level but lift me higher for the sake of your kingdom for the sake of your majesty hallelujah hallelujah the last prayer and then we'll deal with the request here Micah chapter 3 and verse 8 it says I have power by the Spirit I have power and it is by the Spirit Psalm 66 verse 3 says say unto God how terrible art thou in your ways it says through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you not through the greatness of your speaking is someone ready to pray one last prayer say father in the name of jesus the anointing the unction the grace to rise from this pit and to remain in victory let it come upon me from heaven lift your voice and pray the unction for the next level the grace from the spirit hallelujah 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 i want to truly honor your pastor and your father for allowing this i have a covenant with god of answered prayers hallelujah yes i do i do listen to me let me pray for those in front here all of you that have come to the front every spirit that holds your life you know my voice i send it as an instruction in the realm of the spirit at the count of three let them go now one two three out of them now go 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 out of their lives out of their destinies everything you have stolen in the name of jesus be gone forever in the name of jesus we curse you altars of darkness be gone forever in the name of Jesus. We see the rain of your love, we feel the wind of your spirit. Now, the heartbeat of heaven, let us hear. We see the rain of your love, we feel the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear so let it rain let it rain will you open hallelujah the bible says unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come please listen I'm standing in faith 
and i'm standing in partnership with the grace upon your father if you are yet to drop yours please just bring it here this is a representation of your pain this is a representation of your sleepless night this is a representation of that which you do not want to see exodus 14 14 please give it to us Shalada sali shalahas kabranda gaduziata. Haro zazima ato jale grondo ziziata ro sata balikata. The Lord Himself, the Bible says, shall fight for you, and all that will remain with you is your peace. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Please stretch your hands towards me. I like you to agree with me and pray in the spirit pray in the spirit everywhere as I lay my hands upon this request hallelujah hallelujah i stand upon your request prophetically the same way i'm standing upon it everything that is on you as a lord i bring it under your feet now in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god in the name of jesus the son of the living god it says behold i give you authority to tread upon snakes and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy believers hear me these egyptians that you have dropped today in the name of jesus you will see them no more forever you will see them no more forever you will see them no more forever listen job said he will deliver you from six things one of it is the scourging tongues of men any pronouncement over anyone's destiny whether it was warranted or unwarranted my bible says even the lawful captives shall be delivered i declare by the blood be free from every cause be free from every pronouncement in the name of jesus In Genesis 32 the Bible says when Jacob was alone a man came to him and he wrestled and he said lead me for the day break it he said I will not let you go unless you bless me and he said what is your name he said Jacob he said thou shalt no longer be called Jacob but Israel for as a prince you have had power with God and prevailed and he touched the whole of his tie and blessed him and then my bible says the sun arose and they call the name of that place peniel the face of god whatever has made night time in your life and has stopped light from rising in the name of jesus i declare let your nights be turned into day now hear me whatever has refused to walk in your life is a master we have toiled all night please believe these are not just mere words they are words with a throne that backs them master we have toiled all night he said nevertheless at your word what you did and failed january february march where you failed we empower you go back and excel go back and excel help them please my god Go back and excel. Hear me. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Whatever needs to die for you to see, I declare right now, may the earth open and swallow it.
and david said is there any man of the house of saul that i may show him kindness for jonathan's sake hallelujah yes. and they sent him to lodabar and he went and brought a crippled man called mephibosheth ziba had 15 sons and yet none of the sons was favored and he brought mephibosheth and said you will eat with me here and the sons of ziba were the ones who would tore his land i pray for you every destiny helper allocated by grace to you in this season from the north to the south the east and the west by the power of prophecy i call them into your life financial helpers ministerial helpers destiny helpers in the name of jesus hallelujah we're rounding up anyone called barren in this place whether for you or for your loved ones you have been trusting god for the fruit of the womb in the name of jesus like eli i stand in priesthood with your pastor and we declare according to the time of life return with your miracle testimonies anyone trusting god for a job in this city or around this nation i don't care how long you have waited i stretch my hands to you and i declare by the spirit of grace three months like the ark of god in the house of obed edom we speak to you the words of grace in the name of jesus the allocation that is your portion let it come to you luke chapter 2 and verse 52 and jesus grew and jesus increased whatever has refused to grow in your life everything that is alive grows so your influence should grow your knowledge should grow your prayer life should grow your relationship should grow everything stagnating your growth in the name of jesus christ i cause it out of your life now <laughs> hallelujah every family here that has the testimony of ichabod that you were once in glory you once tasted honor mariko sazia has kabaranda shalakata gratis kabada kato shalende brakatosa ega kepa kato shoto koto parandas kabarasha de katele katush breka teka teka tabakata ratosa de nekata maka shash pariso zikata bariata i declare by the spirit of grace every family brought down to shame and obscurity i speak to you rise back to the place of honor rise back to the place of honor rise back to the place of honor one more prayer stretch your hands towards me this is a symbol of your productivity i declare by the spirit of god that the grace for fruitfulness the grace for multiplication the grace that replenishes let it come upon your life now let it come upon those hands that are stretched towards me nothing dies in that hand can i pray for your spiritual life i don't know what has happened to your fire Shamaka so balakata prayer fire word study fire i pray for you right now fresh fire upon your altar fresh fire upon your altar fresh fire upon your altar some of you before you get home you will find the things that you are your expectations here waiting for you and i say it by the spirit of grace in the name of jesus christ hallelujah now that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings that reside in heavenly places in christ
but we do not need those blessings residing in the heavenlies we need those blessings manifest here and now and the word became flesh the bible says and we beheld his glory even as of the begotten of the father so um, i'll be sharing very briefly on having examined how to come out of trouble please get the teaching hallelujah deliver us from evil we examined it the mystery that brings the saints out of any predicament to a place of glory when the lord himself delivers the just from evil he also preserves them so it is not only important to learn about deliverance you must learn the system of preservation in this kingdom hallelujah praise the lord deliverance means that something went wrong already and it's a corrective measure to bring you back to god's position but then we must learn to be preserved god is not only a deliverer he is a preserver i'll be teaching this morning very briefly on the mystery of divine intervention god is able to intervene in the life of people and not even allow the catastrophe start in the first place intervention means you step in and stop what should have happened to not happen this is very powerful it is not every time that god brings us out of trouble there are times he does not even let us get there and all these dimensions must be captured in our experience in god because there are times where the challenges that we face can so overwhelm us we may not even have the strength to call upon his attention are we together intervention daniel chapter 3 let's start reading from verse 23 daniel chapter 3 It is true that God restores God restores dry bones the bones in Ezekiel's vision were once an army but something happened and they began to deteriorate until they died the longevity of their death caused the bones to so disintegrate by the time the prophet will be speaking the bones had scattered all around but this is a mystery by the grace of God that God will show us that can help men to be on hot in the midst of circumstances this is not it there will when you understand this mystery it will not even get to a point where you will require restoration there is a way that god's hand can come on time there is a mystery you can engage that quarter to shame his majesty will arise to ensure that your eyes does not see shame are we blessed daniel 3:23 we start our reading from verse 23 and these three men this was the experience of the three hebrew boys shadrach meshach and abednego the bible says they fell down into the midst of the burning fiery furnace next verse we're reading to 30 then nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire he says they answered and said o king true o king he answered and said lo i see four men lose my goodness four men lose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no heart someone receive that word for yourself and they have no heart god is a healer but he's also the one who can stop you from being hot and the form of the fourth is like the son of god 27 26 then nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said shadrach meshach abednego ye servants of the most high god come forth and come hither then shadrach meshach and abednego came forth in the midst of the fire three more verses and the princes governors captains kings counselors being gathered together saw this man hallelujah 
upon whose bodies upon whose finances upon whose destinies the fire had no power turn that into prayer in one minute father there is what you can do to my destiny that the fire can have no power is someone praying please keep that scripture there that they all saw these men so they are a kind of men whose bodies the fire had no power lift your voice and pray make me that kind of man in the name of jesus that the fire that is humbling the nations will have no power upon me men whose bodies the fire had no power men whose bodies the fire had no power hallelujah let's continue our reading let's read together nor was an hair of their head singed neither were their coats changed nor the smell of fire passed on them now what the bible says these men so it is not a possibility with every man there are a kind of men that whatever it is that they have done with god the effect is that the fire has no power over them that they do not even smell like what they went through and that the bible says that these men even their coats does not need to be changed i just trust that this is what we'll wrap up this conference with yes that haven't been wounded and battered the healing and restoring power of god comes to lift you but now that you are lifted he will show you a principle where you will never have to go back to that state again rather you will be the deliverer who will go and pick people and this how come you are not touched and he says i come to i came to water life and i was shown a mystery that there are times that the fire can burn you and god can come as a healer as rafa but now i've been shown a higher dimension of intelligence where the fire has no power now if you don't believe what i'm saying you will think certain people are lying can i tell you the truth in all honesty and in all fairness there are people who have mastered certain keys in this kingdom they live as if the devil does not exist there are others who live victorious but there are others who live as if battles don't exist this is a strange mystery remember the bible paul speaking said there are different kinds of bodies that some are celestial and some are terrestrial he said even among the stars one differed from another in glory there is the excellency of the workings of the spirit that can happen in the life of a believer it will compel all and sundry to say there is a dimension of god at work in your life this is what god wants to do in our lives that not only will people celebrate your victory or your restoration from a life of defeat that something will happen to you that will say are you a nigerian is, is something really happening amen let's read that scripture again we're reading down to 30 please give it to us media 3 and verse 28 now then nebuchadnezzar speak look at the effect of this mystery on them he said blessed be the god of shadrach meshach and abednego who had sent his angel and delivered his servants that trust him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god as a result therefore i make a decree that every people nation language which speak anything amiss against the god of shadrach meshach and abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made a dunghill because there is no other god that can deliver after this manner so there are many ways god delivers but this fashion is the type that touched the king even to make a decree the last verse the bible says in verse 30 then the king promoted shadrach meshach and abednego in the province of babylon dominion in this kingdom is predicated upon our understanding the systems of the kingdom i began to observe at the beginning of our teaching in this conference 
that the bible is a compendium of the multifaceted dimensions of god as revealed to the saints and the character of god is that he captures his dimensions in names so the bible is full of names names given to god as an attestation of his workings in specific dimensions when they saw him as a healer they captured it in a mystery called rafa when they saw him as provider they captured it in a mystery called gyra yeah and when they saw him as the righteousness they captured him in a mystery called sikenu out together now so all the names of god are a revelation of the dimensions of him and it is important that the saints know how to access these possibilities i did observe that there is nobody's destiny that is is an advantage by default no the very nature of man and the very sin nature has put us in a position of disadvantage but we take advantage of the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit to begin to redefine our possibilities in this kingdom and there are people whose rate of transformation is so slow they do not reflect much of the glory of god but there are others who because of their passionate search and desperation contend for dimensions of superior transformation that their lives they literally become like gods upon the earth men who the fire had no power over their bodies hallelujah there are keys that make for divine intervention there are keys that make for this mysterious spiritual preservation in the life of the saints it was the psalmist himself reiterating on this possibility that said yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death he said i shall fear no evil why for thou art with me he said thy rod and thy staff they comfort me that you can prepare a table for me in the midst so i don't need my enemies to necessarily go away for me to rise my driving them is not as a result of fear is that i do not want any other object to interrupt my worship of the king but whether they are there or not it should have no effect on my rising that a table can be prepared for me in the midst of my enemies hallelujah but jesus said i will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven we reign in this kingdom by light please never forget this we reign in this kingdom by light it is the light that comes the illumination that comes from the word of god that empowers us to walk in victory darkness is a disadvantage to the believer lack of light will make the realities that are captured in this faith life to look like a lie you have to understand this so two people can go through the same situation and quite honestly one will not even know that he's in a situation like that while the other one all born again all lovers of jesus the difference is their comprehension of the ways of god hallelujah so we must cry for illumination i'm going to share with you three keys that provoke the hand of god to intervene in the lives of men to see that you never suffer shame in your christian experience you will live mysteriously powerful when you walk with these principles hallelujah can we pray in one minute again and ask the lord to open our eyes father i am willing to see and i'm ready to see please open my eyes in the name of jesus christ we're about to pray lift your voice open my eyes i need to see i need to see i need to see i need to see for the sake of my destiny i am tired of shame and reproach lord open my eyes i have seen you as a restorer but become a preserver in my life let hope let it rise 
Darkness trembles in your holy love. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy love. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The first biblical key that ensures a life of intervention and preservation in a believer is the power of consistent prayer not prayer consistent prayer consistent prayer that when a believer's prayer life becomes consistent effectual not just at the point of evil but it becomes a covenant that your prayer life and the fire upon your prayer life never goes down it's one of the mysteries that can stop men from experiencing shame luke chapter 18 and verse 1 the bible declares jesus teaching said he spake a parable to the end that men so if you are not a man you are exempted from this but provided you are a man wearing a body he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray the key word there is always everybody say always always does not mean all day it means consistently according to the economy of god in his dealings with men he does not assume that men need help just because they are in the presence of predicaments you have to understand this as powerful as god is he has so limited himself to respect the will of man there are seven fundamental things gave god gave man at creation one of it is the will the will of man is one of the factors not the born again man man as an entity it makes him the zenith of god's creation and from the time god gave man a will it became scripturally incorrect for god to veto the will of man even at the expense of the eternal salvation of men he still allows us to choose at the expense of man's eternal salvation eternal damnation i meant to say there are people today in hell and yet the father with his all-seeing eyes he watched them live their life on earth and went to hell the will of man is a very powerful concept and because of that listen to me god bounded himself with a principle that until men call upon him as proof that they need his help he may be touched but he is not moved being touched means he's compassionate being moved means faith has beckoned on him are we together now so many people wonder and pray and say lord why don't you come is it that you cannot see that's not the way it works in the kingdom the lord is nigh them that call upon him not nigh them that desire him to come nigh them that call upon him he said call upon me and i will answer psalm 133 i will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not everybody say consistent prayer he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint the challenge with believers is that for some reason we have engineered ourselves into engaging prayer only at the instance of trouble that we can see the moment trouble comes and it becomes imminent that we are in defeat then we now begin to pray we we come up with all sorts of fasting programs and prayer programs but the prayer ministry is the ministry of priesthood is part and parcel of the spiritual growth process of a believer please understand this it is not something that should happen only at the face of chaos no there are many believers who will tell you i'm tired i'm busy but you hear that someone dropped dead or is in coma and suddenly you find out that they have all the time that means they always had the time you only have time for what you are passionate about 
hallelujah an attack on your prayer life is a real attack he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint in acts chapter 12 when we read from verse 5 to 11 this was the story of um apostle peter when he was caught in prison please give us from verse 5 the bible says that now peter was kept in prison but prayer was made how long please help me peter was kept in prison but prayer was made without season prayer was not just made without season because peter was caught it was a culture of the early church to always be in prayer prayer was made without season of the church unto god for him verse 6 and when herod would have brought him forth the same night are you seeing now i told you that the the, the intervention means that the trouble is never allowed to manifest the next day he was to be beheaded and the bible says that same night while peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers before the door of the prison se seven it says and behold the angel of the lord came upon him and a light shined in prison and he smote peter on the right side and raised him up saying arise up quickly and his chains fell from his hand notice every time he shows up like this chains fall the same thing happened with shadrach meshach and abednego and the angel said unto him guard thyself and bind on thy sandals so he did and he said unto him cast thy garment about thee and he followed me verse 9 and he went out and followed him and wished not that it was true what was done by the angel but thought he was in a vision verse 10 it says and they were past the first and the second word and they came to the iron gates that leaded unto the city which opened to them of his own accord and they went out and passed through one street and forthwith the angel departed from him massive intervention on the strength of prayer you do not know how cheap satan is until you master the art of consistent prayer consistent prayer because you see in the realm of the spirit the bible lets us know that the prayer of the saints are held in vials according to revelations that when the there is like a prayer bank in the realm of the spirit that is able to go into the future of the saints prayer in vials lifted before the lord and stored for the times when they will be needed in the life of believers many believers do not pray i submit to you they pray when they come to church and they are led by a man of god to pray they have left the prayer ministry for men of god and the moment you seem to be a bit serious with your prayer life society makes you feel guilty say are you a pastor where are you going with this thing it's a very dangerous deception by hell especially at the times that we live now he spake a parable that men ought always to pray and not to faint when jesus was god he never prayed but when jesus became a man he prayed all through because all men pray to survive they don't just pray to be victorious are we together you can only fight the attacks you know and you have seen and you have perceived but there is more just like the man of god shared when he was on stage here let me tell you something if an average believer understands the schemings of hell part 24 hours over your destiny you will never never miss prayer again it is the one that manifests that you see that you know do you know i i read the book i read the book of job and the bible says job offered sacrifices for his children but we do not see job consistently as a man of prayer i saw sacrifice but i did not see prayer i guarantee you if job was a man of prayer the tragedy that happened would not be allowed to happen if the devil wants to attack you the system is first he brings through pride and carelessness and complacency 
an, an arrival mentality he will allow your prayer life to go down he will allow it to go so down and then one day it will be like a dream he will strike you in a way and a manner that will surprise you hallelujah consistent prayer in acts chapter 16 just write it we may not read it when you read from verse 25 to 34 the bible talks about paul and silas who were bound in jail and every time they caught the believers and put them to jail the goal was to eventually kill them not just to store them there and the bible says at midnight that paul and silas prayed and then they sang praises unto god it was so loud the prisoners heard them and then when you read the other verses they will tell you that suddenly there was a sound that god came the prison the bands broke and the jailer was about to kill himself and he said no don't do this we are on hot because they prayed and they praised you must obtain grace from god families must come up with an intentional prayer program let me tell you this if you are not systemic about your prayer life you will never be consistent prayer has nothing to do with emotions you must come up with a systemic approach to prayer maybe for someone this may be a solution you've been praying and say lord why am i up today and down tomorrow you must come up with a systemic prayer i personally recommend taking advantage of mornings and nights because for most people we are workers and the the time we can steal out to really focus and concentrate is the mornings and the nights it doesn't mean you cannot pray uh, any part of the day but i'm telling you the mornings and the nights there are few times where we see jesus praying even in the afternoon his times were before the day broke you invest time in prayer are we together james chapter 5 and verse 13 apostle james said is anyone afflicted james chapter 5 and verse 13 is anyone among you afflicted the biblical recommendation is let him pray not let him go around discussing with people not let him go around attracting sympathy let him pray by the grace of god i tell you with all humility i am a product of prayer i know what prayer does to the gates of darkness when the saints are serious about it show me what is refusing to work show me the door that is refusing to open i like you to stay and pray and you watch the wonder working power of prayer it was bishop Oedipo that said no matter how mad a man is he will not enter fire by mistake he can hold your trouser and people say yeah he's mad just forgive him but he will never enter fire and say i am mad do you know the bible says when a spirit leaves a man that that spirit goes through desert places nobody is there to cast that spirit out of the desert and yet the spirit leaves the desert and and prefers the body of that man than the desert and i i, I studied it and i said why do they hear deserts i found out is the heat desert is a hot place and the fire that burns there will make the demons prefer a cold human body than a desert without anybody to cast him so when your life becomes like that desert the spirits by themselves will be compelled to relocate there is there is an extent of fire a requisite level of fire that when a believer carries i tell you they project an arrow without your knowing that arrow will re is a spiritual circumference when it enters that zone it it, re it doesn't just return back to sender it returns with a message written on it You will not have the luxury to react to every satanic assault so you fortify yourself a system of auto reaction by an investment in prayer to the point that even when you are sleeping your spirit is praying if you are not a person of prayer you will not understand what i'm saying there is a way you can pray you sleep and you just want to stretch 
that stretch of two minutes will become a disaster to hell shakas koparatoski batalia mabratu zesikatalia paratu ziata oh people pray 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 i beckon on you in the name of jesus that every spirit that is eating your prayer life is eating your destiny it takes more than intellect to arrive it takes more than intellect to be exempted there are arrows that fly by day there are noisome pestilences there are destructions that wait in noonday we move swimming in an ocean of evil it takes prayer to keep exempting yourself every time you pray you leave a prophecy in the spirit i am exempted my children are exempted all that concerns me are exempted there are spirits that are sent on an errand that even them they know that errand will not happen because they wonder why they were sent to certain people that you can carry a dimension of prayer fire it's not for preaching no i'm not talking of prayer to prepare sermons he maketh his angels wind and his ministers flames of fire you get up your walking round many years of the investments of prayer in in a shrine they are conjuring things and they bring your picture they say for this man and for his family and while they are praying suddenly like a mighty rushing wind they hear a sound from the spirit you are registering your presence in the realm of the spirit exempted from evil exempted from catastrophe let me tell you this there are many times sometimes i'm about to travel i live quite a busy schedule and when i want to travel people i know who are genuine men and women and prophets of god they can send me a text and say apostle are you about to travel i say yes he say please don't travel i just saw a revelation i saw a ghastly motor accident and i saw you in it i say you are right except that you hold on receive a report from the spirit that was sent dominion is the ability to veto the workings of darkness if i if i if i fear death i will not bless the body of christ again because the devil does not have a special day to want to kill me every day is a day that is a project when you see men survive this is is not because the devil is not aware of their existence they have mastered the art of paralyzing him he told job he said have you not built a hedge around him as you are listening to this there is an impartation of the grace of prayer for some of you god is telling you this is why evil is prevailing in your family there is no one there to stand and administer priesthood i'm not just talking of five minutes devotional thank god for that i'm not talking of just family prayer that ends up in quarrel i'm talking of a dedicated time of prayer not praying and you are browsing no i vow that you will not be promoted in this office don't argue with the man leave him and his folly go back to your secret place listen the ministry of angels are real but many of us have never experienced it read your bible angels walk with prayer anywhere you see the angelic the prayer ministry activated them you are not a person of prayer you will know nothing about angels i hope you're getting blessed please do not sit down and fold your arms and allow evil to come and crush you the arsenals of hell are rising like never before all of a sudden it looks like you are having dreams you don't understand you're having visions you don't understand the issue is not just to wait until the day you have an opportunity for counseling and as you begin to pray 
you are investing time in prayer show me a weak believer who looks like he's a victim of the vicissitudes of life introduce him to the priesthood of prayer i show you a sign and a wonder whilst you're seated in one minute can you just blast in tongues for one minute as a sign and a token to your destiny that i am still coming men who fire had no power over them please take seriously what i'm saying men ought always to pray men ought always to pray zikesh kalari sahasanda bragadasia katabratis shiperaketos yata you mentioned the name of your children you mentioned your office you mentioned your business you mentioned your family forcefully advancing by the spirit of grace forcefully advancing no arsenal of hell no arrow of darkness no prophecy no divination no enchantment no witchcraft no ordinance in the heavenlies will prevail over me will prevail over my destiny hallelujah let me share with you a story many years ago one time i was praying in the night and when i was praying in the night i used to pray behind a wall and while i was praying that was my first encounter with a physical demon not a vision a demon like you are seeing somebody and all of a sudden i see this being stand and it said get back and i'm watching my god what is this will men believe if i tell them this then i just prayed in tongues and that's how it left you see i don't share these things because there are we live in a generation of people who not all men have faith when people hear these things they think you're just talking rubbish in one of the encounters i was praying praying in the spirit all of a sudden my roof just disappeared and then i see this being like a sea creature it had a tail looking like a dinosaur but the tail also had its own life that means the tail can disconnect and still be alive the eyes were as big as that of a human being and it was looking at me and it spoke and i had it it says so you think you want to bring god's people into abundance that spirit is what the bible calls mammon i saw it i know the spirit that keeps people poor i know the spirit that destroys people see there are dimensions in the spirit you cannot access if you don't pray i i didn't start having encounters with angels just because i was born again and a child of god there are frequencies in the spirit you rise to one day you will hit an escape velocity and you are in a dimension of dominion and power that the earth will respond to are we together do you believe what I'm telling you? Yes. They are about to drive people from your place of work. Instead of going around to talk to someone and he says, bring one million, bring two million, I will consider you. No, men ought always to pray. See, let me tell you this. If you believe in God and you believe in the power of prayer, engage it and watch what happens to you some of you are crying i'm looking at you because the holy spirit is telling you had you prayed this thing that happened it's not because god is not mighty it's because heaven kept asking who in this family can pray evil is about to come but heaven is ready heaven is ready who is there to pray they come in dreams they come through prophecies people send text messages but slumber keeps you the bible says a little it says, awake thou that sleepest and christ will give you light you must obtain grace to kill the spirit of slumber in your life mm. 
Kila sila rozi anda bradu zikata. The hand of God is coming upon this what this these people. I'm seeing it in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, I'm seeing a spirit. I cast that spirit right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are not in ministry when you hold a mic. You are in ministry when you are serious with God and serious with prayer. I have told myself by the grace of God and with all humility that there is no mortal man who will meet me and remain the same. It's a covenant with God. It's a covenant that I have with God. That if I pray for you and nothing changes, I will go for a retreat. I'm wasting my time. It means I'm not doing ministry. Listen, I'm not saying this to brag. I want, I want you to be angry this morning. Challenge yourself. That when you come, spirits know you are coming. Spirits know you are coming. When you stand there, there is an effulgence of grace from you. You can fake power, but you can't fake a relationship. You can't fake a track record of a life of prayer and consistency. That before evil arises, prayer has gone forth. Before evil arises, an arsenal in the spirit, there is a bulwark of power protecting defending there are forces that want to make every destiny to not rise there are horns that if left will frustrate the counsel of god it will take the ministry of prayer say in the name of jesus I obtain grace to fan my prayer life back to flames. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I obtain grace to fan my prayer life back to flames. Spirit of laziness, spirit of slumber, I come against you. It was while men slept that the enemy came and planted something. Please sit down. This is a thanksgiving service a few minutes and we're done the next key that provokes divine intervention according to scripture that the saints can access to win battles even before they start is the power of praise praise is not just about singing and dancing alone is a mysterious instrument for warfare and faith psalm 22 and verse 3 Paruse but thou art holy o thou that inhabitest the praise of israel that god makes the praise of men his habitation psalm 18 and verse 3 i will call upon the lord who is worthy to be praised he says so by using this mystery of prayer and praise they are weapons shall i be saved keep that scripture please i will call upon the lord who is worthy to be praised he said in doing so shall i be saved from my enemies that when they encompass me and they say where is his god i will engage the mystery of prayer and after prayer i will praise the god who is worthy to be praised it says that when i do this that so shall i be saved from my enemies judges chapter 1 and verse 2 judges chapter 1 and verse 2 let's hurry up they were about to go for battle and they inquired of the lord what tribe should go first and lead in battle 
so that we can win and the lord said judah judah means praise it says judah shall go up behold in praise i have delivered the land to his hands there is there is something mysterious about praise that is called perfected praise praise that comes from the the depth of a man's heart like your pastor shared for the things that he has done for the things that he is doing and that which he will do praise is powerful it was kenneth copeland that asked bishop david oyedepo he said you claim we are the ones who taught you faith but how come god has given you increase like this and bishop oyedepo laughed he said i danced every one of these people to church i danced every one of them in praise alone let me tell you this this thing you call a dance is a mysterious spiritual weapon listen please listen praising god with a dance is a mystery that only traditional people understand that they invoke there is a reason why every tradition has preserved dancing through decades it is not just about shaking your body there is a deep mystery in a dance hallelujah yes that when the ark of the lord was taken back to jerusalem david escorted it in a dance and with praise and saul's daughter saw him and said you are too dignified you are insulting the pedigree of your office and he said i am dancing before the lord who took the kingdom from your father and gave it to me and god had it and she died barren please listen to me if you master the art of praise thank god for the one you do corporately in church but go back lock yourself write all your prayer requests write all the mockery write all the shame are you together now and dance it before the god of heaven if you can't sing get Igbo high praise oh yes oh yes and you play it and dance before the lord like a madman it's none of your business whether you can dance or not it's not a competition this is warfare are we together that you rejoice and celebrate his majesty you will watch battles that you don't need to fight is when the victory is won god will say you were supposed to fight this the mystery of intervention i have seen this mystery change impossible situations in the lives of people i will call upon the lord who is worthy of praise people who had no business having jobs people who did not apply and when the names came out their names were there with no application psalm 67 from verse 5 to 7 psalm 67 let the people praise thee O god let the people praise thee verse 6 it says then shall the earth that means the earth has been instructed to in to yield its increase only at the instance of praise now the earth is a universal point of contact everything makes contact with the earth your destiny helper makes contact with the earth the person who will give you breakthrough makes contact with the earth the person who will lift you makes contact with the earth so when the bible says the earth should yield her increase this earth you see is a universal point of contact everything that lives touches the earth the bible says as for the earth out of it comes bread you can dance your way with honor and while you are doing so god will wake someone and say remember i told you to keep two million naira that you will bless some people now this just bless this brother with it and let him pay his rent and the person does not know you you just get a text send me your account you think they are scammers until you see their lot and god says i'm not endorsing laziness but i am showing you that i am the god of all flesh and that in praise the bible says glorious in holiness fearful in praises 
there are dimensions of god you will only see in praises hallelujah so while you were dancing and you were celebrating it was not just a church celebration i tell you sincerely you are provoking something in the realm of the spirit fearful in praises go back home today don't just stop here go back home find a room find somewhere just place some worship and praise and dance before god and someone says ah did you get an alert you say no 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 no. something is happening in the realm of the spirit and while you are dancing you are celebrating five minutes will turn to 10 minutes 10 minutes to 15 minutes 15 minutes to 20 minutes 20 minutes to 30 minutes all of a sudden you start getting text messages someone you have been trying to pursue by yourself for five years suddenly says where are you i don't know why you are coming to my mind now you know the bible says for we know they don't know but we know are we together fearful in praises number three the third key that provokes divine intervention in the life of believers is the power of sacrifice write it down the power of sacrifice psalm 126 verse 1 to 6 sacrifice is a mystery in the kingdom that god never ignores that people can change the tides of things against them there have been times in the bible when it was obvious to certain kings that they were going to defeat them and take their nations the bible says they carried their own children and slew them and when they slew their children and indignation rose before god and the battles were overturned my bible says when the lord turned again the captivity of zion we were like them that dream verse 2 then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing then said they among the hidden the lord had done great things for them three the lord had done great things for us whereof we are glad verse 4 turn again our captivity o lord as the streams in the south they that sow in they that sow in there are certain seeds you don't laugh when you are sowing it when you are giving ishmael you laugh but when it is truly isaac you will know that this one please keep that scripture there they that sow in tears shall reap not with joy in joy and then the bible says verse 6 that please give us verse 6 he that goeth forth and weepeth why because he's bearing precious seeds he says without a doubt he will come again rejoicing bringing in the sheaves believers let me tell you this sadly every time preachers teach about sacrifice most times we think that it's just about money and giving money and emptying accounts and so on and so forth the real idea of sacrifice is using the principle of resurrection to change the circumstances in your life let me share with you a mystery god taught me and that would be the end for this session according to scripture the bible says this heaven and this earth shall pass away is that true that a new heaven and a new earth can come again now paul teaching on the seed taught a mystery and he said that this seed in the kingdom you don't only reap what you sow but there is something you can do to your seed that at resurrection it will carry another body that god is able to give your seed another body is that correct and according to scripture the bible says when a seed is sown it dies do we agree it dies and then it comes back to life that means any season i do not want to see in my life i can tie that season to a seed and if i plant that seed provided that seed dies that season must also die with it i show you how to end seasons in your life 
that I see a season and I'm tired of that season I can bring that season to end by using the principle of death and resurrection I tie that season of delay I tie that season of pain I tie that season of disappointment to a seed the moment that seed dies I start rejoicing it's impossible for that season to still be alive when your seed has died and then when resurrection starts it comes with another season another season in your life or a robots before he died one time he was diagnosed of an incurable disease and the doctor told him oral please prepare you may not be able to survive this you may not leave and he said why he said we're sorry we've done our best and he called his wife he said how much do we have in this account that account called his staff and he said go and empty it as a sacrifice the moment that sacrifice went mysteriously his system began to change you see i've taught this you see why it's dangerous to steal money in church because you don't know what season who is trying to kill if you stop that season from dying you will continue that season in your own life are you getting this now yes because seeds should die and if you come and carry tenera someone has tied his delay tied his barrenness tied his witchcraft on that seed and you carry it and put it in your pocket it's not money you put in your pocket you authorize those seasons and say i have the power to handle you come to me because it's only the one who changes seasons that should deal with those seeds show me any season that you do not like in your life i can show you how to change it that if god can grant you grace with understanding and you take a sacrifice i have torn seasons in my life overnight by the power of seeds hallelujah i remember many years ago i was in port Harcourt. i was tired of a season in my life and the lord gave me an instruction it was during a conference and he said to carry everything i had when i say everything i mean everything they didn't have much i put everything in a bag and dragged it like a coffin to the church unfortunately i went late and i sat at the overflow and when people were dancing to come and give their seats people were giving land people were giving a lot of things the holy ghost decided to disgrace me he said you wait till everybody is done then you will come and i had to obey true story as soon as everyone was done giving he said now you can go i held my bag this was my it was a real isaac i dragged everything to the altar in the presence of everyone when i dropped everything something inside me fell with it i knew that this was isaac i went back to my seat and i sat down and the holy ghost spoke a few words to me i will never forget what happened to me the next day 6 10 in the morning someone calls me and says are you joshua selman I said yes he said send me your account number i said who are you he said that's not the issue just send me your account number and he sent something to me that except you are not godly you must praise god when you see that kind of thing and from that time god began to do things in my life seasons can change by the power of sacrifice are we together sacrifice sacrifice is not just giving checking your pocket and carrying money and dropping no sacrifice is an intentional it is not the money it is the understanding and the sacrifice that backs that money you can drop money and it was just donation sacrifice in first Kings 17 when you read from verse 6 I believe 
the story of elijah and the widow in zarephath the bible says that elijah came after the ravens brought bread and all of that when you go to verse 7 that he came to a woman in zarephath and he told her she was trying to pack her wood and he said madam bring me a cup of water respectfully she was bringing it to honor the man of god he said while you are coming please make me some bread i'm hungry and she said sir sincerely i'm about to eat the last one so that i and my son will die and he said surely that will not happen he said you just bring it and let me eat and when he brought it he prophesied to her she lived off that until the famine was over psalm 50 and verse 5 gather unto me my saints they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice you can ask your pastor you can ask every man of god that i know there is nobody i know who is thriving in a position of honor and grace that sacrifice did not take them there once upon a time archbishop benson idahosa was entering a plane and there was an issue in the plane and there was need for a seat and you know nobody was willing to excuse and do all of this and a particular businessman got up to honor him and he said because you have honored me he prophesied to him the name of that businessman is aliko dangote there are stories behind the glories of men and today it can be an opportunity for you to seal this praise service with an understanding of sacrifice that you can change seasons and you can introduce newer seasons into your life with power with understanding i once had the story as i round up of a couple this is a true story this couple came to church and i think the church at that time was having a project and they wanted to zinc the church and they were also having their own they had their own house and then they were trying to build another i think or so for rentals and they decided as a couple they said we are going to do something that is really crazy they said we are going to carry this money and we're going to take it to the church and we'll sow it there and they took that seed crying and when they dropped that seed they returned back home and according to the man he said the lord told them that you will never have to build a house by yourself in your life again because of this that you have done the time that man was talking without exaggeration he had 21 properties none built by himself these are the kinds of teachings where it becomes difficult to not teach without a testimony but then it also becomes difficult to share your own testimony because at that point when, when you do it now it will be it will become like it is pride and then because we seek to project jesus and him alone i can share with you testimonies your pastors can share with you testimonies of what sacrifice can do so don't think this is some jamboree to just manipulate anybody who sincerely loves you and wants you to be exempted from evil from poverty from pain will tell you this today by the grace of god and with all humility i've had the opportunity to meet people who i do not know who come together as a business and say we came and agreed that we'll make you a non-executive board member in our company who are you what do you do they say no you your own is just to bring the presence of god in our business don't don't please don't think men of god are daft well you know people have a way of believing that all we do is just preach we don't know anything at all about finance about life it's not so it's not so hallelujah that it is possible to step into prepared blessings there are times god will give you seeds to sow but there are times the urgency will require bread coming directly from heaven he can do both he can give you seed to sow and he can send manna from heaven for you some of us the urgency in our lives right now does not require seeds to sow you need bread coming from heaven 
to cater for your needs hallelujah the power of consistent prayer the power of a grateful heart expressed in praise praise with a dance praise with a dance with understanding and then the power of sacrifice that you lay something down that shakes the gate of hell and you say lord by this seed i am prepared to change seasons by this seed i am prepared to move to higher dimensions of the anointing yes ago i took a seat to go and honor a man of god and when i went to honor that man of god he looked at me and he said kneel down and he says father put him in a position where only him can solve that problem i thought it was a selfish prayer i said oh, no 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 I'm, I'm all for the body of christ i like everybody rising together and i could sense him feeling that is your business i'm praying a prayer for you now i understand what he was saying that wherefore god had uh what was what, was the highly exalted him and given him a name that is above it's not a name that is below a name that is above your name can be below but there is a name that is above that when the name is mentioned there is a reaction in this kingdom hallelujah my life is a testament of sacrifices i tell you sincerely under god i believe it is so with your pastor the only person left is you life will remain at a natural face for you till you accelerate your rising through the power of intentional sacrifice you may not have money to give one day wake up in the morning and plead with your pastor and say sir i don't have money to give but i am here today to iron your clothes i will iron your clothes and wash your car with understanding that is sacrifice as you are washing that car father in the name of jesus i'm tired of trekking i'm tired of walking around like a fool i'm tired of stagnation when they kick a car it moves obediently my destiny should also move and while you are washing that car and you are washing those clothes and the lord says so this is what you are doing to honor me since you cannot see me you are honoring my servant step into the next level this i'm telling you is a very powerful mystery very powerful mystery recently a a great man of god a, a great friend of mine he went to go and sow a seed into the life of god's servant um baba deboe and when he went there he told him he said lie flat on the ground on my carpet and when he lay flat on the ground he began to speak to him from the bowels of his spirit when i saw it i said this man see there is a way that people speak you know they are just blessing you so you will go but there is a way they are standing in their office with the throne that backs them activated and they utter words from their spirit it will rattle systems and structures till it shifts your life are you getting what i'm saying i never start my year there are specific sacrifices to specific people let me tell you the truth you see we say these things because we want you to understand that it's not just you know we have a way of thinking people are just lucky god is just helping them it's not true many of you by the grace of god have had a choice servant of god seated in your midst week after week month after month but you have not had the discernment to say who is this man and what great when i saw your property the extension there i was talking to your pastor i said i thought this was the end of it when i saw it i said my god this has to be grace here and yet for for a long time you are looking for a property that you can have the discernment to carry a sacrifice and come and kneel before pastor and his wife to say sir i discern that you are a career of grace that brings dominion at a territorial level i pray in the name of jesus that you will activate something in my life it does not matter whether it's done in secret or it's done in the open <sighs> doors just open like that are we together yes this is the mystery by which men ordinary men 
rise to supernatural dimensions of grace with the mighty hand and the power of god sacrifice is powerful i live in it it's not something that maybe you do once in a while please hear me if you want to change seasons and you want to take shame out of your life let sacrifice be like a shadow to you those who are not of this kingdom will call it foolishness they will even call it manipulation of members and as i've always observed i know that there are places and there are people where there are all kinds of things by the grace of god your church and this place and this conference is a place of truth and integrity and i tell you sincerely you can turn seasons around i had the privilege of talking with one of the group general managers of a bank in this nation and i prophesied to him that i saw trouble coming to your bank mister and here is my advice for you get a sacrifice and take it to a man of god as god will reveal to you and watch what happens and with childlike foolishness he carried that sacrifice and the last time we spoke it was a wonder what god had done in his bank this is not something that is just spiritual it has monetary implication it has destiny implication hallelujah yes the power of sacrifice mama i don't know what grace was on you you didn't go to school but you raised 11 children by frying akara it's not about akara there was a grace i carried this sacrifice with my big manism and my masters and doctors let something come upon my life whatever made you to feed 11 children and none of us you were giving people rice who went to school when you see supernatural results and consistent results it's no more scientific listen it is what is on you that controls what is around you everything around you is a report card it's an attestation it's showing us what is on you thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over i came from a region that did not have so many successful people I saw people become mediocre. I hardly saw ministries rise from that point to a global scale. And I said, no, this I have to exempt. See, there is, there is a holy anger. There is an anger that comes upon you. That you say in the name of Jesus, seed, go for me. I, I send you like a weapon. Enter my tomorrow. Scatter what is not of God. Scatter altars. And ensure that I do not see shame. hallelujah it's true it's true i went for a conference a pfn conference in adamawa some years ago and the man who drove me was a doctor he's a lecturer in the university there but he had been barring for a long time and he said please allow me drive apostle this was a distinguished person in the academia and while he, he never spoke to me about it and on the final day I now looked at him and said why am I hearing the cry of a baby and he said thank God I said I'm hearing the cry of a baby because the Lord is telling me that you have been barren your wife has been barren he started crying today as I speak to you I don't even know how many children he has <laughs> exempted from shame through the power of sacrifice exempted from shame through the power of sacrifice husband no job wife no job children no job no way you carry a seed and you take it before the lord and say if god be god let fire fall from heaven and take away this shame let me tell you many people are not yet tired of shame that's why sacrifice looks too heavy when you see the implication of shame in your life and your destiny and reproach We are going to pray this is a thanksgiving service but god wants to perfect this in our lives and it will happen through the power of sacrifice i tell you sincerely there are many of you here as i'm talking to you the spirit of god is speaking to you and saying this is the step 
that you need to push i'm not talking of giving for god's sake like you just carry money and come and drop emotionally no this is a calculated intentional it is 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 coming from the bowels of pain i'm tired of a season in my life oh god i am tired of always begging and looking for things i am tired of always being stranded somewhere on the way and you provoke seasons and you watch the hand of the mighty one move and shift things in your life i'm going to pray for you tonight but as we round up this conference i have not made this discussion with your pastor and respectfully speaking I don't know what God is going to tell you now I know that this is not something that I'm speaking by the Spirit and I apologize I hope I do not break any protocol listen to me I want you by the Spirit of God to stand with God in prayer and say Lord speak to me what seed as a sacrifice will I bring not to the church not to the church to this vessel of yours and his wife there is a grace they are the spiritual coverings over this place i sense in my spirit that god wants to shift people into seasons i know you can come and drop offering for church i'm talking of the grace tapping into the grace of god upon this man that there are sacrifices that god is going to speak to you in this season he will speak to you as a family he will speak to you as a company see except god is not god that you heed to this that i'm saying you will testify in tears on this stage at the way god will shift you through seasons it is true hallelujah this is what i do this is what i live by it's not theory it's true that you can wave certain seasons goodbye and they will wave you back authorized to leave you certain dimensions of shame live your life forever till jesus comes please rise up on your feet we have just two three minutes in one minute i'd like you to talk to the lord father i have given you thanks for all that you have done in my life but i'm ready to shift seasons don't just pray for things pray for seasons i sense in my spirit that we are in an encounter this morning to shift seasons not just to bring more things not just to bring new things but to shift entire seasons in our lives from seasons of spiritual bankruptcy to seasons of spiritual buoyancy seasons of lack and wants to seasons of blessings and abundance seasons of mediocrity and obscurity to seasons of notoriety and honor are you praying please lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray exempt me from evil oh god exempt me from disaster i'm tired of shame tired of reproach tired of shame tired of reproach tired of the mockery of men let no man ask where is my god again put a testimony he said he put a new song in my mouth a song of praise in my heart many will see it and fear and put their trust in him someone who is angry with this current level like a woman about to give birth are you praying father in the name of jesus as soon as zion travails she shall put forth a son i'm tired of this season in the name of jesus i have given you thanks and praise for this level for all that you have done from january february march april may june july august september october november now is the time to change to shift to a new dimension hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord now please listen I want to pray for you finally and then i'm off the stage i don't know what it is that god is going to speak to you on i will pray for the grace for prayer 
and i've taught you the mystery of praise your pastor is a master at understanding that and he so demonstrated it with his life upstage but the part that concerns me right now is the area of sacrifice and you don't have to do it you don't have to be coerced but that there are people here by the spirit of the living god that the lord am, am i am i am i am i fine sir there are people here that the lord is speaking to you that you are in a strange season of a sacrifice or a season that demands a sacrifice this is not for everybody you will not go to hell if you don't come out but i know that there are people god is speaking to i'm not going to mention any amount but this is a sacrifice you want to change seasons in your life i want you to leave your seat please don't come out and stand here and then not obey god there is no point doing that you sit back don't feel bad at all i'm going to pray for everybody i'm just flowing as the spirit of god has told me please i'd like you to come and stand here quickly in prayer mean what you are saying mean what you are saying mean what you are saying don't this is not an emotional thing please let it be from the depth of your heart please give me a bit of volume it's time for seasons to change please don't just stand looking at me pray in one minute father i'm standing here because seasons must change and i must testify seasons must change financial seasons spiritual seasons by the power of the holy ghost god is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent hallelujah keep coming please make space for them please make space for them can we make space for them just if you need to shift a little you will watch the wonder walking power of jehovah over your life we end seasons through sacrifice and we birth new seasons through sacrifice those of you here you can shift forward a bit so that you make room for more people we are here for you come and do what you do we are here for you come and do what you do set our hearts on you so you will do what you do this is a move we need a move This is a moon. She la baradu zas ye kataba la daba. Please look at me. I'm going to politely invite your pastor and your prophet to join me. There's such such hunger to speak over the life of the people please hear me some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears i assure you by the god of heaven that if it is this god we serve and it is not if if i stand here to deceive you and that i'm teaching you cunningly devised fables may a curse rest upon me and my generation and my children's children but if this is the integrity of god's word then i assure you if god be god know that this the last season you came to this church with is the last season you are seeing in your life forever some of you what you are doing now is your children that will eat from it and your children's children they will ask you one day and say how did we come into this because i look at the past and it does not look like what should be and you tell them i i initiated a process of transgenerational relevance through the power of sacrifice the day i did mine i cried let me tell you i was not laughing no i cried don't be ashamed of your tears some of you are crying because you are tired of seasons one day you go better is nonsense
time does not change anything time only reveals when you think about your children you think about your life your ministry your destiny then an indignation rises in your heart and you say let god be true and all men liars let me speak over your life for some of you it is in this prayer that altars will finally be buried forever by the sea it took sacrifice to build those altars it is sacrifice that will destroy them some of you the voices speaking against your destiny that will never allow you rise it takes more than just casting out demons father in the name of jesus here at word alive we stand and i stand again in partnership with the grace of the man of god for every one of you who is standing here i command fire from heaven and i pray oh god my god who is also your god the fire and the grace and the unction that shifts people to new seasons may that grace rest upon you now may that grace rest upon you now in the name of jesus christ every power tying your finances your spiritual life repeating all seasons in your life you change jobs but the same seasons keep repeating you change location but the same seasons keep repeating i bring those seasons to an end now in the name of jesus The same thing happened when you were in Lagos. The same thing happened when you were in Port Harcourt. The same thing happened when you were in London. The same thing happened you were in US. Now that you are in Abuja, the same thing wants to happen. I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood. And in the name of Jesus, I bring tragedy to an end in your life. I bring shame and reproach to an end in your life. In the name of Jesus. Let me pray for your finances. Please help those under the anointing. Listen to me. There are three levels of wealth revealed from scripture number one there is a level of wealth that has to do with exchanging your value and your time for rewards are we together now value that is that comes from transacting business number two there is the second level of wealth that is as a product of transformation you don't sell that value you give it free but the benefactors of that value are compelled to bless you such as what ministers do they don't sell the value but then when people are transformed they bless you but there is a third dimension of wealth is called sovereign wealth wealth by prophecy that prophecy is able to create a climate of favor upon the life of a man it was a prophet that said by this time tomorrow let me speak over your finances i stand by the grace of god i stand as one helped by god almighty i stand in faith with your pastor and i pray if god be god i give you three months from today 90 days by prophecy may your life shift in a way that will surprise you in the name of jesus may that prophecy rest on your life let it go home with you let it go to your place of work with you may this prophecy go to the market with you everywhere to go with you and it shall not fail till it comes to pass in the name of jesus christ everything in your yesterday that needs to come to an end right now by this sacrifice in the name of jesus i end it now the shame of yesterday and now the pain of yesterday and now the tragedy of yesterday and now the lack of yesterday and now the bankruptcy of yesterday and now the coldness of yesterday and now and i speak you to a new season of victory i speak you to a new season of power i speak you to a new season of fire i speak you to a new season of abundance i speak you to a new season of speed in the name of jesus christ your pastor is going to speak and prophesy over your life right now please open your heart to receive it